my back is broad, but it's a hurting, and, and all I want is a you to make love to me. I'll never be your beast of burden. I've walked the miles, and my feet are hurting. Hey, this is Tim Pierce. I'm going to show you the rhythm and a few of my favorite fills. Click below and check out Sophia's links. She's in the studio right now with a bunch of great musicians finishing a record. Definitely follow her. Also click below if you want to check out my free lessons. So here's the riff. I'm seeing an E chord right here, but I'm only playing the upper partial of it. I have my third finger here at six, index finger at four, second finger at five. You can see the shape of the E right there. There's a light tremolo on and some reverb. That's really all I need. And this is a very, very rich sounding guitar. I have the neck pickup on. I liked it the best for this. And then I lift off these fingers to expose my index finger barred across the fourth fret. Strings two, three, and four. So it's the same strings. And then I do three down strokes. Hit that, and then I mute it really quickly. So there's a space, and then I quickly pick up <laughs> the E chord's cousin, the C sharp minor chord. Once again, just an upper partial. I'm skipping the bass notes on both these chords. And there's a good reason for that. That's because the bass and drums are covering that territory. So in recording and being an ensemble player, you don't need to do all the notes. And sometimes on guitar, it's the mid and upper mid notes that are best. This is a perfect example of that. And the Stones rhythm part is like this too. The rhythm part I'm playing is not totally their part. It's a cover, so we're kind of doing it our own way. That is the realm they're in, the three string partial chord realm. 
so when I pick up this C sharp minor, it's six, six, five, and four, and it's a four note chord. No worries about the low strings, because the bass is covering that. Then quickly, I jump up here and have my index finger at nine, lay it down, bar it, strike it, and do this hammer up here where I am on 11 and 10, third finger and second finger. I hammer. There's enough sustain and enough push on the amp to where the hammer sounds strong. And then I come off and strike again. Do it slowly. What's important here is the empty spaces. Pay attention to this. I'm muting just by lifting my fingers off the strings and letting them rest. Maybe some palm muting over here too. See how this lays down a couple of times? One of the times when I do it, I leave this long and don't mute it. I just let it slide off and it's a much smaller gap. That gap is created by just lifting the index finger up and letting it rest on the strings. And there's a couple of other silences that are created by the palm here, the side of the palm. So I just keep cycling this. And there's one variation. You could find others if you, you know, if you feel like it. So she takes a break from singing at the end of the first cycle leaves me room to do a fill. I do an R&B fill with some double stops, come up here to the 12th fret. The first move is actually 11 and 12 sliding up to 13 and 14, real quick. And then I take my third finger and I mash it down, creating a bar at fret 12. And this is an actual slower slide. So the first slide is quick, second slide is slower. And then I start to cascade down. I re-strike, slide down, re-strike here, slide down, play this double stop there, and then walk down the scale pentatonically. What we've got here is 11-9, 11-9, nine, nine, 7, and then real quick, 9-7-9-7. Let me do it in time. I'll do it really, really slow. Slide, slide again, but elongate the slide. Then strike and slide down. Strike and slide down here. Pick up this double stop here at nine. The index finger and cascade down major pentatonic in the key of E. Do it again. Here's another favorite kind of fill I like to do in this situation. The bass goes up to G sharp and A, and I'm able to create a G sharp minor chord and an A major seventh chord, partly with just having the index finger there while the bass goes here. So it's a little release that's slightly different than the rest of the stuff, and it's subtle and it goes by quick. And then when the bass lands on A, I do this kind of thing. And what this does is create this A major 9 here, A major 7 here, and it settles back in. Kind of an R&B country finish. So all you really have to do, and I do it with these two fingers, I go to 9 and 7, 
and connect it, slide it while the sound is still ringing down to five and four. And then just finish out. Let's hear how it sounds. That time I went. But you could go. And they are upbeats. Up, 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 up. And it's just this little quick thing that creates a beautiful kind of different tonality just for a moment as we travel through the chords. So here in the B section or bridge, I kind of just do my own thing. It's a three piece, drums, bass, one guitar. It's pretty naked. So I am kind of responding to that by doing something kind of simple and smooth. So it's an A chord, but I choose kind of this A2, which, and it's just three notes, open A, E, and B. And it's syncopated, and I use a palm mute to kind of pronounce that syncopation. Second stroke's an upbeat, but you're still doing a downstroke. And then the next chord is pretty simple, because all I do is bring my third finger over on the E string to this G sharp note, fret four, play that. And of course it's muting the A string. You don't hear the A string. This, this finger just arches over and mutes, mutes the A string. And do it again. I'm aiming only for the bottom four string. These top two strings do not sound. The little finger is muting them with this flesh just so that they don't ring at all. It's uh, the same way this second finger is muting the A string just by arching over it. So I go through this twice. It's pounding eights on the B chord. And I use my little finger to bar, which is a little unusual. You can use the third finger to little finger. And let's listen to the fill. So the fill going back in. I'm here. Count eight of them, and then the fill. All that is, is I take my third finger on the fifth string, I slide it up from four to six, do a double stop barred at four with my index finger, retrace my steps, go back down, and that's a pick and slide. Pick, slide, pick, pick, slide, pick. Hammer on pull off. Just quick. And then I just walk down on the low E string. Four, two, open. I'm going to do it slow. slower. I play the whole section at speed. So this one starts with an open string thing. And what I have to do, I'm sliding from 11 to 13 on the G string. And then my pick falls through all three strings and hits the open E, but this finger is arching over and blocking the B. So all you hear is the G string, the E, str e string. 
<laughs> so it's a quick slide up and a slow slide down. And you can ring the open E as much as you want. I think I might hit it twice. And then I do this double stop, hammer on. The index finger here at nine. Slide down 11 to nine. different finger choices. And then really quickly I bring my hand up so that the index finger is anchored at nine. I do this double stop. I do that one. They're mirrored. They're the same but they're just on two sets of strings. So I, I hammer on up to 11 and then I do a click. A double click. And that click is simply me lifting up my finger and letting it rest on the string so that it mutes. Let's hear how it finishes out. Yeah, so the last piece, very Hendrixy. But I don't have to move my hand at all. I just bring it this way a little bit, bring it up, and play this double stop again reach the little finger over and grab the E note there and let it slide. And that slide is the connective tissue that allows you to have a nice bridge. It allows you not to leave a gap as you slide down and hit the A chord. So let's do this whole thing slow. more time. The trick is, when you land here, you have to come up quick. Recover and come up quick and move your hand quick. Really quick. One more time. 